Bonjour, je m'appelle Carmen et je suis honorée d'être la seule candidate au poste de modératrice de l'Église unie du Canada. Je m'excuse d'avance que je manque de pratique pour parler français. En tant que personne qui ne peut pas parler ma propre langue autochtone, je vous prie de croire que je suis quelqu'un qui apprécie la diversité linguistique. Je promets d'améliorer mon français parlé. Friends, it has been an unusual first half of the year for me. When I was first asked if I would consider letting my name stand for moderator, I said yes because the request was earnest and I trusted those who approached me. But I wasn't in with two feet. Coming out of 2021 and the confirmation of unmarked graves that first made national news in Kamloops, but then have been followed by so many thousands of others, there have been times in the past year I've struggled with whether or not I could continue to serve the church, how any of us could continue to serve the church. I'm grateful to the board of directors and the leadership team at First United where I've been in ministry leadership for the last five years. This spring, I was due for a sabbatical and despite the nomination for moderator, the team at First United supported me taking a break as scheduled. It has been a grace-filled three months of learning, study, rest, travel, and rejuvenation. I was able to connect, to reconnect with my own deep sense of call, as well as what my own vision for leadership in the church might look like uh, at this time. And let's be clear, it is a frightening time. We are seeing the failure of social safety nets and the very heart of social democracy strain under the burden of unbridled forms of capitalism. Even before the pandemic and the disruptions to the supply chains and the opportunistic profiteering off of the pandemic, the increasing cost of living is quickly outpacing stagnating wages inside and outside of the church. While many important changes are starting to take effect in the smallest and most hopeful of ways, there is still much to do as a country and as a church when it comes to reconciliation and the relationship between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people in this church and in Canada. And that's without looking at our global corporate existential threats like climate, the climate emergency. And I see all this, I see you, my siblings in Christ who are struggling under the weight of all this. While many communities of faith struggle at the local level, we are asked to do more and say more about what is happening to the world around us. We stumble in our human fallibility, putting up obstacles to the full thriving of the created order. Change comes too fast for some and not fast enough for others. And in all this, we must dare to imagine what we are called to as one small branch of the tree that is the whole Christian family. We have affirmed and will be affirming our call to deep spirituality, bold discipleship, and daring justice. But if there are millions of people in this country who identify as United Church, there are just as many millions of interpretations of what those words actually mean in action. Those of you who know me know I am passionate about social justice, whether it is economic or racial, domestic or global, and especially about reconciliation, or more accurately, what we say in my own First Nations language, which means to turn around and to make things right. Much like the Christian idea of repentance, it is a lived amends that focuses on making things right. But for me, what needs to be made right between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Canadians is intimately connected to the myriad ways that our lives are out of balance more generally. Do I have a lot of answers for how to do that? No. Do I have a lot of opinions? Probably. But I also have faith, hope, and love. Faith that together we can practice deep spirituality, bold discipleship, and daring justice. Hope that what Jesus promised us is true, that when two or three of us are gathered in the name of creator, that our prayers will be heard. And love, I have deep love for this church, for all of you, for every person. A long time ago, I made a contract with myself that I would be a woman of integrity, just loving people as an extension of God's grace. And while I don't really know what I'll be getting myself into as moderator, there's a lot I know I don't know, I do know that I can promise you that. 
to continue to be a woman of integrity, just loving people as part of my calling to serve the church. My grandmother once reminded me never to forget that we are an Easter people and that we believe in the resurrection. The more I learn about brain science, the more I believe that the purpose of that part of our story is because when we stay in a place of hope, we are creative and we can solve problems really, really well. And thanks be to the creator for that, because together we have some work to do. May it be so. Amen. Mm -hmm.